the theme of the hall is the question, what does it mean to be human? And so nowhere do we say the Smithsonian says this is what it means to be human, but rather we're setting up a conversation with the public, a dialogue that connects the science of the origin of humanness with the broader question and the broader perspectives that visitors have about what it means to be a human being. Humanness did not arise all at once, at least our version, modern Homo sapiens version of humanness, but that there are relatives in our family tree all now extinct, but each one of those species compiled some elements of what it meant to be a human being. I wanted to have a way in which visitors could interact with the evidence and bring those ancient times and those ancient lives of those early humans to life. OEC exists to support all the Smithsonian museums. We are uh, an in-house exhibit production company. We are the only model shop at the Smithsonian. This is called the flange. So this is the, the wall or the barrier so that we can separate different parts of the mold. So then you'll, you'll pour plaster on this half here, this third. And then when that cures, then you can take this flange off. It's just clay. This is the top half of the mold. This plaster part is called a jacket. The rubber part is the actual mold. And you can see the, the negative impression of the skull in there. This is one of the casts that we got out one of the different craniums. Inside that mold, it's rotationally casting, and it's hollow, but it's still nice and strong. The idea for the exhibition goes back 25 years. In many ways, I'm glad that we waited because there have been tremendous discoveries and growth of our understanding of the field of, of human origins. One of our big partners was Le Musée de l'Homme in Paris. When they heard that we were building a state-of-the-art conservation room, basically a big display case, to display one of the great treasures of our human origins collections, the only original fossil Neanderthal skeleton housed in the U.S., the Musée de l'Homme curators said that we understand that we, you have this and we would like to display two of the most famous fossil human skulls ever found. First is the fossil skull of Cro-Magnon in France. We usually say Cro-Magnon, but it's Cro-Magnon, which was found in 1868 and was the first skull to really demonstrate the antiquity of our species. And then the other skull is the most complete Neanderthal skull ever found. That's dated between 50,000 and 70,000 years old. So it's spectacular to be able to, for three months at the opening of the exhibition, to display these treasures, not only from our collections, but also from other museums. The wall of skulls, the skull display as we, we call it, represents six million years of human evolutionary history. Those include fossil finds, replicas of fossil finds that have never been cast before, that have never been displayed in public. The hobbit skeleton, Homo floresiensis, the first time it's ever been on public display is in our exhibition. The Indonesian government gave us permission and in fact asked us to take the fragile fossils and to use medical scanning technology to create the 3D data and then we brought it back here and worked with the Office of Exhibit Central to print out the bones. What we're looking at is the Hobbit as it sits in the 3D printer build chamber getting ready to materialize. The two main materials are the powder and the binder which comes out of basically inkjet print heads. The binder is deposited where there is scanned data and it hardens the plaster. That eventually will build an object. And at this point, I can take it out by hand. All the powder gets recycled through the system so you don't squander any of it. It can build anything. It can build a lot of things uh, that you can't even make. And what's nice is it can get also the interior information. So unlike sometimes with traditional molds, you won't get the inside at all. We also, of course, wanted to put a face on these early ancestors. They're not just vacant, eyeless skulls, but rather they were once living creatures. And using the state-of-the-art forensic techniques, people can look into the eyes of these early humans, and they're the very best reconstructions, most lifelike, that have ever been done. The evidence of human evolution is voluminous, 
and include the hundreds of thousands of archaeological finds that occur from all over the world. So not just fossil bones, but also the traces of the evidence of what those early human ancestors were doing. These are little sickle blades, and I think they use them to, to harvest grain. This is a sort of a replica, or a model of how these blades were put into this so that, that the wheat could be, or whatever grain could be harvested. It's the story of all of us, every single human being on the face of the earth. And to communicate that effectively, we also had to figure out the emotional connection that people could make with the hall. I will go to an exhibit and just see how people react and interact. I made some skulls that people could touch so it's great to see people go over and just run their hands over these skulls that they would normally never have an opportunity to do. The exhibit is very much about discovery. It's about, in many ways, self-discovery for, I hope, every visitor who comes in there, as well as, I hope, a way in which we help people reflect upon the discoveries that we make in our field sites that we want to bring to the public and show them the very best science we possibly can. One of the foundational principles of evolution is that we as a species are connected to all other forms of life on Earth. As a person who studies evolution, that's one of the most beautiful ideas I've ever encountered in my life.